Hey everyone, my name is Ryan and in today's video we're going to be adding code blocks with syntax highlighting to our Next.js blog. Now this video is going to be following the tutorial which is on my blog, so if you want to uh, jump over there it's ryancarmody.dev slash blog slash uh, add code blocks with syntax highlighting to Next.js blog prism.js. Uh, that's a long one but that link will be in the description below. Um, so this video follows on from the uh, video that I made uh, about how to make a blog with Next.js, Strapi and GraphQL. So this is the blog that we made without the uh, syntax highlighting here. So that's what we're going to do in this video today. Uh, so we've got code blocks here, we've got code titles with syntax highlighting and that content is coming from a Strapi CMS. Now this is not necessary, you might have this content in a some local MDX files or another content management system. But as you can see, it's just here in the three backticks. We can specify the language. So um, that's actually meant to be JSX. And we've also got our um, a, a file name here and we've got the code in here. So this renders out to this. So that's what we're gonna be doing in this video today. All right, so let's go on to step one of the tutorial. So uh, we want to serialize our markdown with next MDX remote or that package. So if you followed along with the how to make a blog with Next.js, Strapi and GraphQL, uh, this is already done. But if you haven't, I'll just jump over to my code here. Now, if I go down to my get static props function, uh, you'll notice well, here I'm just pulling down my content with GraphQL, but you might be using the file system or a REST API. And I've got this function here called serialize, and this is my markdown here. So this converts it into JSX, and then um, inside of the function I use the MDX remote tag, and I spread that content on. So that's how you do that, and that's what we're going to be using in the tutorial but we'll jump back into step two. And step two is installing the Rehype Prism Plus and Rehype Code Title. So they're gonna be two packages we need. Um, so you can use uh, NPM or Yarn. I'm gonna use Yarn and I'll install that one. And I might just skip forward. I'll install the other one. So I'll see you in a second. All right, so those two packages have installed. I also installed this second one here and we'll move on to step three. So add MDX options to your serialize function. So remember from the uh, get static props function, we had, um, we're serializing our markdown here. So we're gonna add some options to this. And what I might do just to save time, I'll copy this one over. So this is exactly the same, except now we're adding MDX options and we're gonna be using two rehype plugins. So we've got rehype code titles, so that's gonna be for the code titles and rehype prism, which is gonna be our syntax highlighter. Um, so yeah, we've got those ones in and we also need to import these two uh, right at the top. So I'll come up here and I'll put those ones in. And now what we can do, we can actually go over to our content management system and we can add a code block. So the way we add a code block is with the three back ticks uh, and then we put our code inside. So I'll jump over to Visual Studio Code and I'll just grab a code block, just any random one. And with Prism.js, we have to specify the, the language. And so I would put JSX here uh, and for a complete sort of list of the languages that are supported, you can jump over to the blog. And we're actually in step five now, but we're gonna come back to step four. And there's a link here to the different programming languages supported. Um, so yeah, so if I come down here, there's a whole bunch of them, uh, but I know the one that I wanna use, which is JSX. Then I put a colon and I put the name of the file. So this is slug.js. Now, if I save that one, I come back here, save this, and I will go over to um, here, and it's already done it, but I'll just refresh the page here. Um, you can see that this code is coming through here, but there's no syntax highlighting. So I'll open the dev tools, and um, you can sort of highlight over these ones, and you can see that in parts of the code here, it's added these classes. So this is working well. So the last thing we just have to do is add a Prism JS theme. Um, so we'll jump back over and we'll come back to step four. And there's a link here to a whole bunch of Prism JS themes, but let's jump in here. 
and if I scroll down, yeah, there's heaps of them here. Uh, for this one here, I'm going to use the Duotone Dark, so I'll click on that one, and I'll go Control, oops. So, uh, grab that one, and I'll come back into my uh, app, and in my styles, I'm going to create a new file called uh, I'm using SCSS, but you might just use regular CSS. This is just CSS here. Uh, so I'll put it in here, save that, and I want to just kind of import it. Um, you basically just need to make it so your whole entire application can access this. And we'll save that. Now when we come back here, uh, you can see this looks a lot better. So all the code has been um, highlighted here, but we just have to make a couple of changes to um, this one here so it actually comes up. So if we highlight over here, we've got rehype code title. So we just need to add that in here into the syntax highlighting. So I'm going to go rehype code title. I think that was it. Cool. So I'll save that. Uh, so that doesn't look quite right. Um, and I will just come down here and I'll just go re, rehype code title. And let's maybe make padding 12 pixels. Um, let's make the background color black. We'll go white. Um, so that's looking a little bit better. Uh, we also have to come up to the pre-tag which is up here, just give me a second. And I'm just going to set this margin to zero. So that's going to get rid of that margin there. And maybe what I'll do is I'll do border radius of, um, what is it, six pixels. Hope, I hope I've got those sides right. Yep, that looks good. And we can even go as far as, you know, adding some border radiuses here. Um, so let's come up here. Uh, where would that be? Yep, just in here. So border radius zero, zero. So I'll save that. So now that looks really good. Uh, we've got our code, which is syntax highlighted. Uh, now the last thing you might want to do is add a light and dark mode, uh, similar to what I've got in my blog. So if I come up here, we've got some code blocks here, but I can go into dark mode here and it'll change the theme. Now the way I've done that, and we'll just jump over to my uh, source code for my personal blog, is I'm using Tailwind CSS and what I've done is I've gone through and changed uh, a lot of these ones um, to have a dark and light mode. So let's have a look, for example, the rehype code title. So the uh, the text here is grey 800, so that's going to be quite dark. And if we go here, um, it's quite dark here. But uh, when I go into dark mode here, I'm saying that the text, oops, uh, the text is gray 200, which is gonna be quite light. So if I jump over here, um, go into dark mode, it is quite light here. So I won't do a, do a tutorial on that, but uh, if you wanna add light and dark mode, uh, Tailwind CSS and, you know, just applying different styles uh, to these ones, uh, it's gonna be a little bit tedious because you're gonna have to go through and, you know, have a look at, um, you know, the tokens and, you know, change these colors here for light and dark, but it, it shouldn't be too bad. Um, so that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed that and it is helpful to you. If you did like this video, please uh, like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.